guys, it's SJ and Naomi. Hiya. Um, last video we did together was a few weeks ago now and we were talking about Naomi's stage four diagnosis with cancer. So we said we would be back and do these updates when we can and it's a good day, we're together. So we're gonna do an update on um, what's happened since that video, which was quite a huge change really to the diagnosis and something that I don't know we expected but we hadn't felt really secure mm. like I was thinking of the analogy last night like now I feel secure but then I felt like we were still skating on ice when we knew that something might change yeah because we hadn't had the PET scan so when we met with the um, oncologist after the surgeons so say like on the 23rd when we were told that plan of that surgery, what, everything we described to you, um, I did know that there was a PET scan still outstanding, but I have to say, um, I don't think I'd gone quite as far in my head as maybe it has gone, but... Um, so we knew the MRI scan had shown where the tumours were, which is the prim primary cancer in the bowel, then the metastasis, I never know how to say yeah. it, where it's spread, which is what happens with cancer, and the reason it spreads, it goes you know, through your blood, I think, and then it goes mm. into the liver, which is quite common because that's the place that clears you out. So it's not having liver cancer and bowel cancer. It's the same cancer that's then your body's taking it to the liver to clear out and it's created tumours there, which we knew about. Um, so we kind of felt that no more massive tumours were going to come mm. up. But what the PET scan does is it injects you with a kind of a glucose thing. Yeah. So we're not experts. Um, and then it lights up around your body mm. where any other cancerous cells are that maybe haven't formed tumours yet. So that's the scan we were waiting on. I think to say, I think I thought that there definitely wouldn't be any more tumours because um, the surgeon had said, I've seen to your big toe. Um, when I had asked him, is there any more, is there anything else that can come out? And then the oncologist on the on Christmas Eve had, had said to us, there's I've only got half more. the information, there could be more. We need to just see what we've got. But regardless, we're going to do the radiotherapy. So let's get to that bit. So we did the radiotherapy. So the radiotherapy week arrived. It was just five days. So they either do like a six weeks, which is what our dad had, or a five yeah. days, which was good. It was just five yeah, days. Yeah, I don't think it's all that um, old. I think it was trialled, that sort of way of doing it. I think it's like a quick blast of five days, um, really intense. And I think it's quite a new process. So I was really grateful that I was having that because I thought I can cope with anything for five days and that's exactly what we did have to cope with everything in five days mm -hmm. so what happened was I went for um, radiotherapy on the Monday and to be honest it's uh, it's just like a big MRI scan um, and you keep top on, it, top on and everything and you just lie down and I felt really calm um, I had been warned that there'd be this sort of bit of going to and froing to get your bladder to the right amount of water because they had tattooed me to exactly where the radiotherapy was going to go in. Like lasers. Yeah, so I had to eat to shrink time. the tumour. So the hope is this is the only one time you have to do the radiotherapy once to shrink that primary yeah. tumour. Yeah, and radiotherapy is the only, was only ever going to be attacking the, the upper rectum it's in, basically, the bowel cancer. Um, so I had to, every time, drink water or go to the toilet or drink, get rid of a little bit of water to make sure that mm -hmm. it was, I was exactly the right position for these beams to hit exactly the same spot. Bit above palava, but nothing to worry about and nothing that you simply can't handle. And every day it was at, like a really good time. The children were at school. I had a rotor of friends taking me. But then what happened was I went on Monday. That was my first one. That was fine. And then in reality, what happened is I came home was a bit um, tired, was led on the sofa. My daughter came home from school and said she was cold, but sort of all eyes were on me because it was like Naomi's had radiotherapy for the first time. So my husband, my other daughter had fallen asleep in my husband's arms and we were thinking, gosh, that's really weird. Um, the house was really calm and lovely. And then Summer said, I'm really cold and was putting on a dressing gown and everything. And we said, we'll do a lateral flow test. And then lo and behold, she obviously was positive with COVID. So in that very split moment we had to decide obviously how we're going to manage the household so I needed to not be with Summer who had Covid um, but then that obviously meant leaving the home and I was to be honest that was a really mega mega low point because we were sort of realised um, I just realised I wasn't going to be sleeping in my own bed and you know when you're a mum you think I can't even get over the flu like you can't even not parent you can't do, not do anything I yeah. thought I'm going to swear I literally thought I can't fucking believe I've got stage four cancer and I can't even stay at home. Um, I've now got to go. And I literally, um, a friend had sent me a card with some stones in, some lovely crystals. And was, we were looking everywhere on Airbnb and we thought we may as well look for somewhere in Cheltenham. So we're near the hospital. This is all at like eight o'clock at night and I just had radiotherapy that day. And, um, and it, 
Anyway, Summer was we were really trying to mask from the children how uh, urgent bear, this was. Bear's eating the trifles. Oh, bear. No, we can't ever get rid of the dog. <laughs> and uh, long story short, my friend Laura does have a pod in her, in Miserdom, where I used to live. Like a shepherd's hut. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I messaged her and she literally, within you know five seconds, messaged back saying, um, it's empty, come for as long as you want. So we packed and jumped in the car. That was me and Genevieve. And, and I just friend here. And I had to leave Lee and the children. And uh, I just cried like, all the way there. And uh, it was just so sad. But when we got there, the pod was turned out to be an absolute blessing. Mm -hmm. Because the same happened on the Tuesday that we got up, went through AJ therapy. Same happened on the Wednesday. My symptoms are still really bad. So there's like, all this nocturnalness in the evening. And obviously ringing to see how the children are. By this point, Lee and both children had covid so i was worried about them and if the covid isn't because it would make naomi more sick it's mm. because obviously if she was positive she wouldn't be allowed in for the treatment so they yeah. have said to cancer sufferers now that they've figured out that covid doesn't make you much worse no so it's not that it was the fear of getting covid for your health as much no as i was just desperate if you had to keep you have to have that radiotherapy it's your one blinking chance mm. and they wouldn't let you in to have it so we were there in this gorgeous pod and Genevieve was doing all the driving every day. I was a bit weak probably at that point, doing a lot of sleeping, but, but it was only fatigue and the radiotherapy isn't bad. It didn't hurt. It's pain, pain free. And it's just unbelievable because it's so massive what's going on, but it doesn't feel like that. And everyone is just so lovely there. Mm. But then on the Wednesday, um, I was really tired and I actually had, had my radiotherapy and they said, all oh, doctors like to see you afterwards. So I'd actually fallen asleep in one of those hospital chairs in reception. I mean, probably have my mouth open, fast asleep. And uh, they called me into this room and um, I was with my best friend, Genevieve. And they just said, um, there won't be um, a treatment to cure because it's spread. And it's in all the lymph glands behind, basically it's by the aorta, the aorta artery. Yeah. Um, it's sort of up behind the stomach, so it's just a really difficult place. So what's happened is, in summary, when I speak to anyone now, they will just say, it, your three cancers are just in difficult places, and that was the summary. But I've probably written about it on the Instagram, but I'll probably my all time ultimate low was that I just obviously screamed when he told me, and I felt quite embarrassed at the hindsight that I screamed, but I said, I've that. only just told my children that I'm getting treatment to get better. So I'd only told them the weekend before. And that's with all cancer, I could think about. With cancer, we know that surgery is the only way to cure. Mm. Everything else is um, to extend your life and give you a better live, standard of life living with cancer. And so it's a huge thing. And it was just devastating that you were with Genevieve, who's great. But we'd gone on the Friday, the three of us, mm. you, me and Lee, to get those results. And they said they weren't ready. So none of us were there. And it was midway through radio. You're living in the shepherd's hut, not with your family. And it was just brutal. It was a bit brutal and I obviously didn't handle it when he said let's leave this here come back in on Friday and you're like okay I'll come back in on Friday but then obviously you're left with your best friend which was lovely back to the pod and I had to ring my husband um, ring my family and tell them that it all changed so for me those last few nights in the pod it was like being hugged because I literally just could stay silent the, ch the children were protected ironically from me being really, really, really sad. We were able to, kind of, in a way, we said, because I went down straight away then the next day, yeah. Thursday, and then we kind of said, in a way, it was like that part, but it was like we hit rock bottom in that pod, and it was a time just to scream and shout and cry mm. and and have to deal with, you know, being told the worst news you could ever have, which is, you know, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be treated to cure potentially and it was a sanctuary for that mm. and the children didn't have to see you and if you'd have had to come home and breathe and get through your dinner time with your kids it would have been too much but then what we did do then is I arrived on the first day mm -hmm. and we just sat up day and night and we were like do you know what guys Naomi's 42 she's got two little kids it's not good enough it's not a, it's not good enough we didn't have enough answers we were like why why you know people do have surgeries we see people get everything removed you know are we literally being offered nothing apart mm. from this radio and, and a bit of chemo and we were just i angry as hell and we stayed up literally didn't we 24 hours we were mm. researching 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 we want to share with you some of the things that we've researched and the number one thing we did was also <coughs> 
we just had a little bit of a break because flowers arrived. And, <laughs> and the dog was barking. Dog was barking. Battery died. Very organised. Um, but yeah, so when we were in the pod, basically we felt like the cure option had been taken away from us, but we really knew that um, it felt like we were left it with it in our hands to yeah. fight. We weren't given anything. We were like, but what does that mean? What's next? And we just weren't getting anything. And we were like so frustrated and so angry. So we started to do this research. And I want to share what we're going to be doing but I want to make sure it's when we, we can tell you our experiences mm. of it because we're not medical experts but the no. three things that we found out about was number one was the care oncology clinic it's called which is in London they treat people with all different stages of cancer but they do treat people on stage four cancer and what they do is something called a protocol which we'll read a lot about if you're looking into cancer so the idea is that the chemotherapy will deactivate the cancer stop it from spreading and mm -hmm. almost keep it dormant and then basically you have these periods where you're off chemo and then you're back on it and you basically do that until you've got not enough good cells left because the chemo kills all of it and that's just the end so we're like well that must be something else you can mm. do in between so the protocol basically is a, what they call off-label drugs so the drugs that are maybe invented for something else so they discovered it when they realized that diabetics do better in chemotherapy why is that? And it was because of the sugar blockers or something. Mm. Again, this is like brand new, to like reception level mm. you know, explanation. Um, so they can give you drugs that are cheap, over the counter drugs that are for different medicines that would take 15 years to trial to get to a cancer um, treatment plan. Mm. But that this clinic, and it's all based on if you've read The How to Starve Cancer by Jane McLelland, that's what she talks about as well off label drugs complementing um, chemotherapy and the traditional things and then the diet as well but it's not all about diet so the analogy that I really understood was she said imagine you put a seed in soil imagine that the soil that the seed is your cancer what you're doing is trying to swap the soil for rocks mm. so it can't carry on growing mm. so once the chemo has hopefully killed it as much as it can then you live off chemo you can't be on chemo forever and it doesn't come back as quick so that was one thing that we're looking at and we've booked care oncology yeah, clinic next week grateful for the go fund to me and we're going to be doing that and we'll tell you our experiences of it mm -hmm. but we watched a great documentary which i'll link below and we were up all night we were watching it and nay's eyes were closing and i was like go to sleep i'll keep researching we were like desperate then i started reading about all the tr research trials mm -hmm. and came across um targeted treatment which is one thing where they find out your actual genetics of your cancer again GCSE level science I'm not saying this correct but your your cancer basically is very individual and it'll be made up obviously of certain cells and so we know you have certain things in your cell and the targeted treatment will go and skip over your good cells and go just to the cancer cells and attack that particular makeup so that's one thing some are available on the nhs some you have to pay and they're about 12 grand per cycle so that's something we were learning about thinking what the heck's this like totally scared brand new that. and then i was sat reading the research trials and all the research trials are about something called immunotherapy which is a way to like with the covid vaccines almost sometimes called a cancer vaccine mm. where it gets your immune system to attack the cancer cells so if you are post-surgery and you're living with no visible signs you could have this potential vaccine so that if your cancer starts to pop up again your body immediately attacks it and this seemed to me there'd be the future yeah. So I was literally sat on the bed in the pod going, nay, I'm reading all this. And I was writing down all the trials that we could apply for, literally feeling alone and stupidly lost and kind of set out to see yeah. in a way, because that wasn't the case, but just because we're the type of people that we can't wait till Friday to have another discussion. We're like, this is Wednesday night. This yeah. is an emergency. This is literally like... We've got death. to have this sorted by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And as I was doing that research, this name is phone pinged. And mm. literally, we keep calling it our side indoors moment. Mm. So I had loads and loads of messages. And obviously, I hadn't told anyone this diagnosis. It was so fresh, even to the point that I was having to like gradually say it to my husband. Because, of course, he was at home yeah. with two sick children. And I was sort of just wording it, saying, no, no it's changed. And no, I don't think it's going to be that. And he was going, well, what do you mean? And asking me questions. And I didn't know them. And um, I just wanted to highlight that the reason Sarah Jane is so good at talking about these things and I go quiet is for me, I'm really impacted by all the emotional side, as is Sarah Jane in a really different way. But at this point, all I could think about was my children, my husband, my mortality. I got completely stuck at that level and I couldn't visualise a future. All I could visualise was my death, basically. And I just got completely stuck in that moment. 
but what I wanted to say and my big big advice that I wanted to add in is for example I knew there was this book how to starve cancer my, my phone was pinging of all these different ideas you know vegan do this do that I'm, I want to do all of it and give myself the best chance of course I do but though I'll have to make decisions on at some point which ones I do because you're literally just throwing money at all this stuff and you're like actually is that right for my body because it is really is your cancer but my top tip and I'll get there sorry I'm waffling is I literally couldn't read or talk about it anymore I couldn't think about it anymore obviously I was thinking about it all the time sorry but I was in so much pain because I've got, still got all the symptoms so what I was doing is say for example the book how to starve cancer as I was buying having Amazon sending them to Sarah Jane my mum and at one to my home I wasn't even at home I was in the pod and just saying please what I had to do is set up a circle around me. So you know in your friendship group, you know who you turn to for certain things. Mm. I've literally had to do that with cancer. So Sarah Jane and my mum are very, very, can get the science and the medical mind. And they have had to absolutely be my anchor on that. So they were doing the reading and then telling me, and I was like, right, I can take that much. That's as much as I can take. My best friend Genevieve is amazing on the well-being and the nutrition, and she's put me in touch with people. Honestly, in LA, it's been phenomenal. But I literally just cannot organise that for myself because all I can think about is managing my drugs to the point that I've now got community nurses coming in and do it for me. So I was having to reach out for help at all these points. And I think that that's my biggest thing as you're the supporter and you're really well read and you've done all that for me, which is the greatest gift anyone can give me. But for me, I have to just get through the day and live. And bear, by, and bear in mind, most of the time I'll probably be on the toilet. So that's the whole <laughs> other thing about it. But my sliding doors moment, and I've just posted something on Instagram. So if you don't follow us, please do, because we really do love the support and it has really got me through, genuinely, my first day of chemo. Um, but... So I told one person when Sally asked me at school um, on the day they went back after Christmas and she said, how was your Christmas? And I practiced to say, lovely, thank you, manifest what you're going to say. And I said, actually, I've got, I've got cancer. That day, she's got a friend called Sam. They went on a walk and it turns out that Sam is just this like angel. So basically, mm -hmm. Sam is probably very modestly really into genetics and works at, in women's oncology, I believe, at QE2 Birmingham Hospital. And she sent me a text saying, I've heard about your family and I just really want to help. Would you mind if I put your papers to someone that I know? And anyway, that's where that's my second what, opinion that has come from. That's what the ping was in that pod. And I While said, Sarah I'm just was reading, reading about immunotherapy mm. and suddenly it felt like that was our moment. a little like, thank the world that they had that conversation we've had the second opinion now chemo is happening we want to talk about second opinion but we're going to do it in another video so a second opinion as we said we're not expecting a miracle we we're coming to accept that this is incurable cancer but we've not we what's happened with the second opinion is we feel we're in the hands of people who are talking our language talking targeted treatment talking immunotherapy with us giving us a chance because i can't um i don't know i'm reading a stinking book in a pot in the shepherd's hut and i'm thinking i need to save my sister's life and now we feel in safer hands and it's allowed us to focus more on the day-to-day -day and not right thinking we're not giving ourselves the best chance so we've had the second opinion do get a second opinion the oncologist the mid mcmillan nurse nobody was nobody um begrudging of it they're like you just you should and we're so grateful we did and we're grateful for i've gone a bit like i said i've gone a bit university but i do feel like we're we're having those moments and it's because we're fighting and we're trying and we're speaking and if you're there on the school I'm thinking don't say anything do say something yeah do, do post on Instagram do start an Instagram group we weren't going to I can't believe we weren't going to no. now I cannot believe in that pod we said we would never do that because we were watching all of your amazing Instagrams unbelievable <laughs> everyone's puns we were like devouring it and then I said to her nay I think the next, while we were in that part, I said, we must do it and um, we must do these videos because we are opening ourselves up and our experience to help. And with the kind of videos we said, this needs to be a video that we kind of really wanted to watch at that low point in that night, we would have watched this video up to in the morning and gone, Care Oncology Clinic. If we can do it, you can do it. And yeah. the other thing is, is um, just to say that we were really focused on our objective. So when they asked me in the second opinion, which I will talk about more, and I really want to talk about it, but it's, I only went this week and it was really huge to absorb. And uh, so I'm getting there with it and I want to talk about it more. But um, 
I wanted to say that, oh my God, I forgot what I was going to say, this chemo brain is terrible. And I will talk about my chemo as well, because actually that's been, I've really, um, I hope it's working, but I have been able to cope with it. I found it okay. It's just the fatigue, but that's okay. I can give into that well now. So we are, gonna, we are going to come back and talk about the second opinion. It's really raw still. It's really new. We're still absorbing it all. But Oh, that we're fighting to get my life so I'm not in pain. That's the problem I've got is that I'm in pain. And the dog is a pain. The dog doesn't have pain. He's in pain. No. I reckon that's our Reiki woman. Okay. <laughs> that takes so. Um, so, yes. So we're getting... That's where we're at. We've had the worst news possible. We've hit rock bottom. We've fought for information. We're fighting to put our trust in people's hands that we trust that will hold us and like i feel the analogy is like when our rope is just swinging everywhere i feel now somebody's yeah, holding the other side of the rope and pulling us and steadying us and that's what we've got from a second opinion which might have been another way around maybe our current oncologist could have given that to somebody else but for us um it's just not the right fit and we feel so much happier because we feel entrusted hands we we need the type of people that we need emails every day i'm doing this <laughs> now there's your scans booked in and we like yes I literally, when they rang me, I just shouted, yeah! We found our person. I was screaming. And you do and need to find your person. Find your person, whatever you're doing. You know, as we were saying, if you were having therapy with somebody, you might switch therapists because you need to find yours. So we're going to talk about the second opinion. It's not um, a cure, It's not a, but it's a fight. 